the the name of the show is do catholics worship saints you're live hey friends this is dan and stephanie burke you're watching behind the scenes divine intimacy radio we'll start the show in just a minute so today we're going to be talking about the saints with a wonderful guest that we'll introduce to you in a minute but we're going to answer the question do catholics worship saints um how is it that saints can help us in our spiritual journey to grow in the interior life to come to union with God. And so we'll get to that in just a minute. There's an <laughs> there's a free webinar coming up. I like the title. I'm sure it will be interesting to people. You should do this around, uh, Jordan, you should do this around uh, Halloween, right? The webinar is called, What is a Ghost? <laughs> With uh, D Jordan Burke, my, our son, and Father Dennis McManus, Father McManus is is one of the most exceptional and extraordinary communicators I've ever listened to before on the on uh, spiritual warfare in particular, which is all I've ever heard him speak about. But he he does seminary formation. He <clears throat> helped um, Pope Benedict with the current rite of exorcism, I think, to make some improvements. And uh, he's just an extraordinary professor. He teaches for or he teaches for the Avalon Institute Higher Calling, High Calling Program, and he also is a, a directs our spiritual direction program for four seminarians. So he's a powerhouse. Jordan's kind of interesting. I don't know, Jordan. Um, uh, <laughs> so, so when is this going to happen? Because you mentioned Halloween, so we don't want to confuse oh, yeah, people. Confuse is there people. a real date? August 1st at 6.45 p.m. Central. And if you can't make it live, you can still register to receive a link to the video. So go to spiritualdirection.com forward slash events, and you'll find that webinar, What is a Ghost? Probably be pretty, it's going to be, it's, it's going gonna to be, be wonderful. super interesting. Yeah, because Father McManus is amazing. Yeah. I, I could just sit and listen to him all day long. And people were mesmerized by his talk at, at the summit this yeah. summer. He was one of our headline speakers and just a remarkable priest now what's interesting is the, our guest has similar rave reviews as uh, father mcmanus so don't don't you know hang out with us for a second and then we'll jump into the show and we'll get to uh we'll get to share with you who this top secret human is that we're going to bring on um <laughs> i can't it's edwards but you know what am i gonna do uh so the last thing I want to tell you about is that um, we have a new pilgrimage that we've announced coming up. Yes, I'm so excited. And it's and it's related to our guest, too, uh, in a way. Um, we're going back to Spain, which has been my... I've loved all of the pilgrimages we've led, but uh, Israel was really a highlight this, la this month, earlier this month. Or was it July? It, doesn't, it, was, it was in recent. the past. It recent. was recent. <laughs> yeah. So can you tell I didn't get any sleep last night? So uh, we're going to be leading a Carmelite uh, pilgrimage to Spain. And it's going to be off the hook. Amazing. Yeah. And if you've ever been on pilgrimages with us, one thing you know is they're not spiritual vacations. We actually pray. And it's also not sort of a Disneyland sort of uh, kind of. It's a beautiful pilgrimage. encounter with the saints that we're walking in the steps of it's it's prayer it's just really awesome we keep it down to one bus yeah uh, you will not find us with three to nine buses as other really wonderful human beings uh do we keep it to one bus because this is not about raising money this is about being together and really entering into the purpose of pilgrimage which is encounter and transformation yeah um so it's awesome i mean if you talk to anybody that's been on pilgrimage with us, it's it's really extraordinary. They're life changing, and I just love all the miracles that we see and the people whose lives are completely transformed through the prayer and walking um, with us in these in these beautiful steps of our saints, which is related to our topic today. Yeah. So spiritualdirection.com forward slash events, same same page for what is a ghost. So check that out. It'll fill up pretty fast, and I think we're ready to go. You ready? I'm ready to go. On your mark, set, go. Welcome to Divine Intimacy Radio. This is Dan and Stephanie Burke. You're listening to your radio haven of rest. 
your hermitage of the heart, your monastery of the mind, where we lift our hearts and minds to heaven to draw upon the wisdom of the saints that we might come to union with God. And we have a very special guest today. Yep. Double, yep. triple special. Yes. I'm very excited to announce our guests. So here we go. Um, Dr. Elizabeth Mitchell is joining us today. She received her doctorate. So I obviously haven't received my doctorate because I can't speak. That's right. So Dr. Yes. Elizabeth Mitchell has received her doctorate in, a list in institutional social communications from the Pontifical University of the Holy Cross in Rome. Um, first, first, first woman, to, first lay, is it lay person, Dr. Mitchell? First lay person yeah, to receive first, a doctor. First lay person and first first female. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, her dissertation, Artist and Image, Artistic Creativity and Personal Formation in the Thought of Edith Stein, focuses on St. Edith Stein's understanding of the role of beauty in evangelization. Um, she has done many more amazing holy things. Um, one of which is she is a professor for us at the Avila Institute. And so we're very glad to have her join us today. So welcome. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Dan. It is great to be here. So today we're talking about, obviously, uh, saints. And uh, you've done an amazing job helping and teaching at the Institute and, and really revealing the beauty of St. Edith Stein uh, and, and her religious name, of course, is St. Teresa Benedicta, but, uh, and is it of the cross? Isn't it of the cross? <clears throat> That's correct. Of the cross. She chose that, well, she asked for that title when she became a Carmelite religious because it was an encounter with the cross during World War I that made her, she said it shattered her unbelief. And I think that's quite an amazing testimony to the power of the, the lived experience of the cross. She was she had a very beloved professor, and his name was Adolf Reinach, and went off and died in World War I. And Edith was asked to come and assist Professor Reinach's widow to arrange his papers. And Edith didn't want to go because she was broken up, and she thought how much more the widow is going to be a wreck and this is a disaster. And the widow was completely composed, serene in her sorrow, wedded to the cross that there was redemption in her husband's death and the suffering of mm -hmm. the death and the acceptance of God's will in the cross laid on her. And Edith said, my, my unbelief, which was very entrenched for Edith Stein, was shattered. Fascinating. Now, we're going to, you already gave us a little a glimpse, a little window into her life, but I do want to back up and ask and answer, you know, the first, the, the, the show begs a question and, and we do know that Protestants listen and also Catholics get uh, criticized or, or troubled by this, uh, this issue that we're going to talk about today, but then we'll dive back into to uh, St. Teresa Benedicta is about Catholics worshiping saints. I, I, one of the great things about being a convert is I know a lot of scripture and I'll never forget the real, the awareness that emerged in me where St. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Right. And it's not a problem to follow someone as they follow Christ. Now, of course, St. Paul was alive when he wrote those letters or he still is alive, but he was, he was uh, he was he hadn't uh, passed on to eternal eternal life or to the um, the great uh, cloud of witnesses yet. But uh, what what do we say when when Protestants claim that we worship saints? What's what's the best answer for that? Accusation? Well, you 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 hit the nail right on the head. It's that our veneration of the saints. It does not stop or end with the life of that saint. Worship is always directed to God. Worship can only be given to the deity, God. And so when we venerate, is the term that we use, the saints, we are respecting and honoring the life that they lived and the way in which they then point us to God. So whenever we venerate a saint, 
what the saint does is takes our interest and our prayers and points it all and gives it all to God. The saints are in heaven. That's what makes you a saint. The church has confirmed that those individuals lived a life of heroic faith, hope, and charity, and that they're in heaven, which means they are worshiping God 24-7. That's what they're doing. And so our veneration and respect then for them, our honoring of them, is always transferred up to God. If you think of adulation, adulation in the sports world, we, we quote unquote, worship athletes. Um, but but the adulation ends there. It ends with the athlete. It often doesn't even spill over into their personal, which could be questionable or unquestionable. We just look at their skill and talent and we, we, we laud it to an obsessive degree, I would say, often in our culture. But there's none of that in venerating the saints. We are asking friends and mentors who are as, as real and as alive as we are here on earth to help us get to our goal, which is heaven. And they do. And I think they choose us. I think they befriend us. I know that St. Edith Stein befriends people. So if you're listening to this today, she's, she's shouting out to you because she has a way to help you in what you're going to do to serve Christ more fully. You know, one of the questions that I think begs to be answered is, is why would they want to help us, right? You know, I was, I was speaking to an individual um, just recently, and the person was struggling with this disbelief that saints would actually want to help them in their struggle, to help them deal with what they were struggling with, you know. Um, how, how do we answer that? Like, why would they bother with us? You know, we're not saints. We may be saints in the making, but we're not saints yet. Um, why, if they're busy worshiping God, why would they bother with us? The, the generosity of the saints just spills over. It's like a fountain that's overflowing in the church. Often, even in my own life, a saint will point me to another saint. Like, hey, you're asking me about this, but did you know that this saint is even better at helping you with that? Today is uh, the memorial of Saints Joachim and Anne, the parents of the Blessed Mother. Um, and so, I mean, it starts in the ancient church and then it goes even to the modern martyrs. But there's a generosity, Stephanie, I think, in the saints' hearts. They want to help us to, to come to where they are and joy and they know the beatific vision. And it, it's as if you, I mean, we all say, hey, did you know about this thing? I'm so excited about it. Can I tell you about it? Whatever it is that we're passionate about and we can't stop talking about it and leading others to it. Um, in our secular lives. And it's the same with the saints, but they're always leading us to God, always. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, if, if you have love, if you, if you know God and he's transformed your life, uh, the normative uh, response is, I want to give everything to the Lord and I want to tell everyone about how he helped me and I want to help everyone else. So if you're truly converted, which the saints are more than the rest of us, uh, of course, they're ready to pour their lives out. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and your spiritual journey. You're, you're obviously, uh, your academic background is pretty uh, substantial, but yet I don't hear a pure academic uh, in terms of your, your, your heart and your mind are united in your pursuit of God, which is, I think, a blessing for, for someone with your level of intellect. But what is your spiritual journey? I guess maybe that's why Edith Stein was so interesting to you. I'm, I'm a pure example of Edith Stein choosing someone. I was in Rome doing my doctorate in church communications. And when you live in Rome, you go to the canonizations just kind of as a life. And there was a Sunday, uh, 1998, in which in October, in which Stein was being canonized. And I went. Um, no, no devotion to her, no prior knowledge of her life or biography. And there I was in the square and I actually said, St. Edith, I probably won't be very close to you because you are this towering philosophical intellect, but, you know, help me and help me to know what to do and how to use my gifts. And she's the opposite. She is so down to earth, so simple, so human, so humorous so wanting to help us in in small ways, leading us then to the fullness of our vocation. Um, she just took me by the hand and said, hey, I've got this 
whole body of work. And if you could sit in the library and figure it out, I'd really like it given to the world. And that's, I put together her, her work on beauty. She has a lot to say about each of us as a masterpiece of the divine artist, meaning we're an artwork of God and our entire lives perfecting the artwork that we are to be fully beautiful and fully realized for him. So it was very simple. I would say simplicity is um, my, maybe the story of my my journey. The Lord was always showing me what was next. And sometimes it was intimidating, um, but he was always there in a family. We always pray that the Lord would send people to befriend us and to be with us and to show us who we should meet and what we do. And I think if you pray like that, the Lord's got the plan um, and he's put inside of you gifts that you that you are going to realize. And it's just a matter of sort of unfolding. Mm -hmm. So it's really beautiful. I love that, you know, because we know that we can help people connect to God through the good, the true, and the beautiful. I think beauty is something that so many people can uh, rally around, that we can agree upon. We can look at something and, and find it very moving. Can you tell us, uh, before we go to break, we've got about, about a minute, um, a little bit about this idea of beauty and why it's so important. What have you learned from Edith? St. Edith's sign tells us what we what we know instinctively, which is that the beautiful is what touches and moves the soul to respond. And so if your soul is moved and touched and is really leading toward joy, that's beauty. That's the quality of the beauty. And it always points beyond to its source, which is God himself. And so the divine archetype, meaning the divine model, the divine perfect form of all beauty, God himself is what you're experiencing in natural beauty, artistic beauty, the beauty of a friendship. When your soul is touched, moved to respond, and there's a joy, that's an experience of beauty. And it's such a powerful way to come to know God. Beautiful. Uh, no pun intended. Beautiful. So when we get back from the break, we'll continue to talk about St. Edith Stein with Dr. Mitchell. And uh, if you have an interest in her and you want to pray a novena to her uh, this year, we will be publishing an, a brand new novena. And we don't believe there's anything out there like it that you can find anywhere. And that'll be, you'll find that at apostoleva.org. No matter when you hear the broadcast and if you hear it after the feast day, you can get it the next, get it ready for the next year. But A-P-O-S-T-O-L-I-V-I-A-E.org. And there's the blog section there, and you can get access to that without being a member of the site. So we'll be back in just a minute. Uh, for everyone listening, uh, Dr. Mitchell, if you're enjoying her, which I'm sure you are, she teaches at the Avila Institute. And uh, there are a few courses coming up that I want to tell you about. Uh, we do we do you have a course scheduled yet sometime soon? Two. In fact, I just started one and it's on the biography of the life of St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. It's a six week course. There are five days, five seminars left. And then in the fall, in November, I will be doing Masterpiece of the Divine Artist, which is St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross's teaching on beauty as a awesome. path to God. So that's avala-institute.org. Um, we have a few courses, other courses coming up short term, Spiritual Wisdom of St. Thomas Aquinas, Healing the Imagination, a reading course in the Lord of the Rings. All of those in Dr. Mitchell's courses can be found at avala-institute.org. And I think we're ready to jump back in. Okay. So when we jump back in, I'd just like to hit the idea of beauty a little bit more. And uh, here we go. And your market set go. This is Dan and Stephanie Burke. Welcome back to Divine Intimacy Radio. And we're talking about uh, with Dr. Mitchell about St. Teresa Benedict of the Cross. A lot of people know her as Edith Stein, which was her name before she became a Carmelite religious. It's interesting, Dr. Mitchell, I think I read a quote a while back from um, Aquinas, and then I wrote a post on it. And I'm sorry, for whatever reason, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it was Aquinas. But he talked about this idea of the mind of God and the expression of the mind of God. And uh, we live because he loves us. Uh, we live at a, re a retreat center that's exquisite. And uh, I, I was just thinking, uh, 
the post had pictures of the beauty at the retreat center. And the question was, would you like to see the mind of God? And so then, of course, the picture, then I would show the beauty in the pictures and then try to help people to understand this is the way he thinks. This, this, the beauty is the essence of how he thinks. Am I, am I on target with these ideas? Absolutely. St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross calls God the divine artist, capital D, capital A. And he is the par excellence divine artist. I was out on a walk yesterday evening and the sky was so gorgeous. I said, it looks like Monet painted that sky. Mm -hmm. And then I said to myself, oh, wait a minute. Monet is a reflection, a shadow, his brilliance of the power of the artistic ability of God. And so th the sky was painted by God last night and it was a beautiful blue and gorgeous clouds. And everywhere you look, you have that beauty. But what St. Edith Stein says, she says, all artistic creation is sacred service. And that's a profound remark. If if the art is true, meaning it it harkens to the genuine and it's in it's in sync with um with truth and goodness, it is serving God. She says, ultimately, we are the living images that God is crafting and creating, meaning that you, Dan, and you, Stephanie, your artworks in the world, your living images that the divine artist is perfecting. And Stein says that happens through gentle strokes and chisel blows. Mm -hmm. And I think in our lives, we, we have known both. We know both. The chisel blows, those moments when you, you just feel like, what was that? And it's, it's jarring. And then the, the fine brush strokes that he comes in and lays into our interior. And what you become, Stein says, it calls them lebendige bilde, which means living artworks, living images. You then draw someone to God because they see you and you're a masterpiece. And they say, what is it that makes Dan and Steph tick? What is it about Mother Teresa that just resonates something more? Well, Mother Teresa, masterpiece of the divine artist. Awesome. Mm, that's never, really beautiful. I've never heard that before. I, I, I know Stephanie's got a question, but it just reminds me a little bit of a, I was going through the liturgy of the hours uh, last week as just normal. And I ran across this passage in the Old Testament where it talked about God delighting in forgiving us of our sins, you know. But this idea of God delighting in us as well has been something I've meditated a lot on. And I, I think that we, because of our brokenness, especially folks who are aware of their sinfulness uh, and they have shame and, and, you know, doubt and, you know, they're drawn to sin and we, we can really miss the essence of who we are isn't, as Stephanie likes to say, you are not your sin. Right. The essence of who we are isn't sin. It's not our failures. The essence of who we are is who the divine artist is is drawing if you will creating unfolding yeah this beautiful understanding that we are daughters and sons of a great king and how exquisitely he loves us you know as you were talking about the beauty of creation um i was reminded that i went out on our back porch here at the retreat center uh, about 4 30 a.m so everything was dark and you know, we had this crescent moon and i could see the stars and as I stood on the back steps and looked up into the sky, you know, it was just a moment of deep awe and praise of how, how majestic and beautiful and generous a God we have. You know, how, how good you are to us, Lord, that you love us with such beauty and that you've painted the sky in this manner just for us and just for me at this moment, right? And just this moment. And had I, had I not gotten up and followed that urge to prayer, I would have missed it. So it was just so exquisite. So I, I'm I'm sorry, go ahead. Did you want to say something? I was going to say, and, and St. Edith Stein, who, who really had no faith until she converted to Christianity and Catholicism, she had been raised in a Jewish family, but she, she gave up praying and she became really a questioning atheist. She says, he who seeks truth seeks God, whether he realizes it or not. And in hindsight, she knows that her 
access to the divine was in the arts and in natural beauty until she met him as Christ incarnate. And she was such an academic, you would think, well, she came intellectually to the faith, but she didn't. She came to the faith through a series of meeting four living images, meaning live breathing people who were living their faith. And that's what broke the, the chains that in a, in a near despair that she would ever find something more. She had reached the heights of academic, let's say, prowess, and, and she wanted something more because there was something more. So when you want some, you go out and you are at 4.30 in the morning seeing that sky and you're called to, to something higher, it's because there is something higher. And so God never disappoints us and he's never less than we could hope or expect or need or want. And so Stein Stein came to the faith through meeting living, breathing Christians. Eventually she meets St. Teresa of Avila, speaking of the Avila Institute. She reads Teresa of Avila's biography and she closes it and she says, this is the truth. And she is ready for really her, her full call, which is going to be to be a cloistered Carmelite religious she lives in the world for eight more years, getting her bearings as a Catholic. Then she loses her position at a university because of the anti-Semitic laws during the Nazi persecution. And that, ironically, that chisel blow is the Lord opening the door of Carmel to her. And she becomes a Carmelite professed religious. And she eventually dies then in Auschwitz concentration camp when the Nazi persecution comes even into the heart of cloisters and removes those born Jewish uh, and takes them to Auschwitz. But she dies as a martyr of the faith because she is, she is rounded up in a persecution that is particularly anti-Catholic. It's her, the, the roundup is retribution for a bold statement made by the Catholic priests and bishops uh, in Holland. At, and that's where Stein ended up for safety. She's transferred from Germany to Holland, Carmel to Carmel. And She's rounded up in, a, in an in odium fide, in hatred of the faith, mm. which is glorious in terms of who she's called to be. That's so remarkable. So let, let's move on to the next question. So what are some of the stories of transformation you've heard while teaching at Avila as people go deep into the life of this extraordinary saint of St. Edith Stein? Um, how, because it's just moving even to hear a short synopsis of her. So I'm certain there are stories of transformation as people enter into the fullness of who she was and I, um, her transformation. I would say that the main comment that students give on the way into the class is, I don't know anything about St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, also known as St. Edith Stein. I've just heard about her and I want to know more. So they come in almost wanting to get to know a friend and because I know St. Edith Stein chooses and befriends and invites, she's called all the students and she's got a special gift for each one of them. And often it's a meeting them where they're at and affirming who they're called to be and the gifts and talents that I think students have, but they don't quite know how they're meant to, to offer more to the Lord. And there's a piece that comes um, from St. Edith Stein, she comes alongside you and she really just encourages you. What you're doing is meaningful um, and, and, and you can do more. I often tell the students to go write an article because their, their insights are so profound as they're living through the biography of St. Edith Stein. So I think then the saint sends us back out into the world. So I think you come into the class thinking, I'd just like to learn a little something. And then you're touched by the Holy Spirit through the intercession of St. Edith Stein and your gifts are released in a new way after the course out into the world because there's more needed of you. I remember I was reading something about her life and she, she, I think she uttered the phrase, the world is on fire. It may have been in a letter, you know, during, during the, the Holocaust and, and Germany's advancing. And she, she asks Dan, she, she really knows that she's impotent she can't do anything to affect the world situation. And so she asks her mother superior in writing to allow her to be a Holocaustum, meaning yeah. I will be interiorly mortified for the Lord and that will have power. And she says, I know other souls will do the same. 
So mm -hmm. if you can't go do the great thing, you can E-F-F-E-C-T -E through your the life you're living, which Joe, Kim, and Ann would have done. They changed the entire world through personal holiness and hiddenness. If um, What is she the, uh, the patroness of? Do you know? It's one, depression and anxiety and mental illness. Oh. And then, which is so fascinating, and also those seeking work, and then those called to witness for their faith. Those three groups of people. Fascinating. Well, and when I see her... One of the things that drew me to her was uh, the photographs of her. And she looked like a woman of deep suffering. I'm sure that she had much joy because everyone in Christ does. But there's just this, uh, uh, I don't know. It reminds me of some beautiful paintings I've seen of Our Lady of Sorrows and how uh, she's just bearing the weight of the world, though willingly, of course, a martyr. Uh, she... There's a resonance with the Pieta. St. Edith Stein was remarked upon as a living Pieta as she mm. went to Auschwitz in the way that she carried other people, particularly children, and and suffered with, with, a, with a willingness as awesome. it went. Well, folks, if, you're, if you've enjoyed um, Dr. Mitchell, she's one of our favorite uh, teachers here at the Avil Institute. I mean, uh, according to the students. And uh, she has a beautiful heart for God and a passion and and, and a, an academic heart that's full, full, filled with God's love and and desire. And it just it pours out of her. So check out the Abel Institute to grow spiritually. And with that, we are our show is up. OK, until next time, may the God of peace make you perfect in holiness. May he preserve you whole and entire spirit, soul, and body irreproachable at the coming of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, just, just for our editor, uh, when you edit the show, and I know we're still live streaming, so the live streamers, don't worry. I, I'm, I know you're still there. But uh, when you edit the show, edit the first reference about uh, Feast Day of Joachim, uh, but leave the, the latter references. But anyway, Dr. Mitchell it's really been great to meet you. And we, uh, where do you live? Where's your, where's your home? I'm in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Okay. Yep. Well, if you're ever down this way and you need rest, reach out to us. We'd love to meet you face to face and host you at the Thank retreat. Thank you. That there. would be, yeah. that would be absolutely. I will, I will try and get there. Thank you. And thank you for all that you both do. It's uh -huh. uh, it's a Holocaust of its own that bears fruit. So thank you. God, God bless praise. you. God and bless for, you. For folks still listening, if you want to be a part of the novena this year, and I'd strongly recommend you do that so that the graces that come through this great saint can come to you, uh, go to apostoliva.org and it'll be in the blog. It'll be published there uh, any any day now um, uh, to prepare you for that, for the novena and for her feast day. Is it a feast day or it's a memorial probably, right? I believe that's right. I think it's a memorial. Okay. Well, God bless you. Thank you for your joy. It's really uh I, I can't say enough how important it is for the people of God to see joy in the midst of a very difficult and dark times. So thanks for helping to make it a little brighter. Thank you. Right, okay. God bless. God bless you.